In this video, I'll show you how to create a custom multiple choice question where the correct answer is based on the number of choices that you make instead of which answers you select. I saw a post on the Adobe Community Forums today where a user was asking, could you create a multiple choice question where the learner could choose any three answers in order for the question to be correct? So in other words, the correct answer is choosing the right number of answers rather than a specific set of answers. And I was thinking about when a situation like that would be appropriate. And I sort of thought of this idea of sales training, where if you were a salesperson selling barbecues, how many is the appropriate number of accessories to select? And I covered my slide with half a dozen or so accessories. And of course, they choose the appropriate number that they should recommend to their customer. Here's my solution. Okay, so I've set everything up on this slide here. I've got uh, six buttons. What I've done with these buttons is I've already created a multi-state object that includes a selected state. So something to show your learner that this item has been selected. We also have a feedback caption that includes feedback for when the answer is correct and when the answer is incorrect. We have a submit button, which will be used to submit and check to see if we've selected the appropriate number of items. And then we have two different versions of our next button. This version actually is uh, when you get it incorrect, there'll be zero points associated with them. In other words, it's not included in the quiz. And then we have a version of the next button that has 10 points awarded. And that will be displayed only when this interaction is correct. The first thing we need is some variables. So I'm going to click on my project drop down menu and select variables. Now I'm going to create a variable for each one of my buttons on the slide. So I'm going to click add new and I'm like, I like to call my variables underscore slide zero one underscore button zero one. And I'm going to copy this because it's a lot easier to make uh, additional similar variables if I've got the structure already in place. I'm going to give it an initial value of zero and hit save. And I'm going to create five more of these variables, button zero one, button zero two, and so on. So there we go, I've got variables for all six buttons with an initial value of zero. Now, because we're actually marking this question as correct or incorrect based on the number of answers, as opposed to which one is the correct answer, we need to keep track of how many answers have been selected here. So I'm gonna create a variable called underscore slide zero one underscore total underscore selected underscore buttons. And I'm going to give this an initial value of zero as well. So I can go ahead and close my variables window. The very next thing I need to do is to create an advanced action that sets up my slide. So I'm going to go into the project drop down menu and select advanced actions. We're going to call this one slide underscore zero one underscore on enter or something like that. It has to be memorable. And what we're doing is we're setting the initial condition of our variables and our objects on screen. So in this case here, we're going to assign our variables with a literal value of zero in case we've already been on this slide before. So I can actually cheat a little bit here and copy and paste this a number of times and simply make a change here. We also want to assign our tracking variable with the same literal value of zero. We're going to need to show our submit button. 
and I'm also going to need to hide my two next buttons. I'm also going to disable my buttons when the learner gets it correct or incorrect. So similar to a sign, we're going to need to enable all of our buttons here. And what happens when you run out of lines here? Of course, you can add additional lines as needed here. So I'm going to throw a bunch of extras in there. So we need to enable And actually, I created two more that I actually needed there. So this is going to be my slide one on Enter Advanced Action. I'm going to save this as an action, click OK, and I'm going to close this for a moment. We're going to go over to the Actions tab of our slide, Properties Inspector, and Execute Advanced Actions. And of course, that will now run. Next, what we need to do is we need to write an advanced action for our buttons. And in this example, I'm going to be saving it as a shared action so that it can easily be used for all six of my buttons. But I'm going to start with an advanced action window. So I'm going to go ahead and open that and we'll temporarily call this button 01. I recommend that you save this advanced action even though you're converting it to a shared action because of course you may need to refer back to it at a later point. This is going to be a conditional advanced action. So I'm going to check the value of one of my variables, in this case, button one, and we're going to see if it is equal to the literal value of zero, which should be its default value here. If it's zero, we're going to do several things. We're going to, first of all, change the state of the button itself. In this example here, this is button cover. That's the um, item that we're, we're going to be working with and we're going to select selected as the multi-state for that. We also need to assign the variable associated with this button. In this case here the literal value of one so that we can keep track of whether this button has been pressed or not. Because we're keeping track of the total number of buttons that are pressed we also need to increment our variable that we've designated for total selected number of buttons. And we're going to increment it by a value of one. Now the else portion of this advanced action is very similar to this. So I can actually select all of these lines by holding down my control key or my command key on a Mac. And I can copy these, go down to the else section and paste them in here. We just need to make a couple of small changes. So in this case, we're going to be changing the state of our button cover button back to normal because this is essentially we're unselecting it. We're going to assign the variable associated with this button back to zero. And instead of incrementing our total selected buttons by one, we're going to decrement our total selected buttons also by a value of one. Now, I'm going to save this as an action, but again, I'm not going to be using this advanced action. It's just there for reference purposes. Now I'm going to save this as a shared action so I can use it over and over again for different variables and objects across this course. So clicking on Save as Shared Action will bring up the Save as Shared Action window. I'm going to give it a name that makes more sense when it's being used for multiple different places. We'll call this button click. And we're going to need to select and provide names for the parameters that are going to be adjusted or changed or selected here. Now, in this case, we're not always going to be working with slide 01, button 01. That's the variable associated with button 1. So I'm going to select this and then give this a parameter description. So this description should be something meaningful for you. Variable associated with the current button. We don't need to keep track of assigning zero or one to it, so we don't worry about those. We do want to provide a description of the button in question. So this is button cover. So this is the, the current button selected. 
the selected state of the current button and the normal state of the current button. We're not going to change this because we're always going to be working. This particular item is always going to be associated with the total selected number of buttons. So this is going to work for our shared action here. I'm going to hit save, click OK, and I can go ahead and close the advanced action window. So now I'm going to select the first of my six buttons and we're going to change the on success action to execute shared action. And we'll click on the action parameters icon and say that we're working with button one, the variable for button one, the actual button we're currently working with, which is barbecue covers or button underscore cover. And we'll choose the selected and normal states there and just hit save. We'll repeat that process for all of the buttons here. And here's our last one here. We'll switch that to execute shared actions and make sure that we're working with the sixth of our variables. The current button is for the brush accessory and we'll choose the selected and normal state and we'll hit save there. So now we have our selection of each button and the appropriate assignment to all the variables. Next, we need to write an advanced action for the submit action. So like before, I'm going to select advanced actions. We're going to call this slide 01 underscore submit. And this is going to be a conditional advanced action. And what we're going to check here is to see if the right number of answers have been selected. So in this example, we're going to check the variable associated with the running total of selected buttons. And we're going to see if it's greater or equal to the literal value of three. So three or more answers selected is the correct answer in this case. Now, if they get it correct, what we're going to do is we're going to change the state of our multi-state object where we have our incorrect and our correct captions. In this case, we're choosing correct. We're also going to hide the submit button because there's no further answer required. And because we're correct, we're going to show the next button that includes 10 points awarded to the quiz. Now, I'd like to also disable all of the buttons here so people can't try to change their answer, even though they wouldn't be able to anyway. Uh, what we're going to do is disable the brush button, the cleaner accessory, cover, griddle, tank, and I think there's one more here. One, two, three, four, five. Disable. The utensils. Now we're going to create an else section for this if then else. The easiest way to do that is to select all of these items since we're going to choose very similar choices here. I'm holding down my shift key and selecting the first and then the last and we're going to copy these, go down to the else section and we'll paste this in. Now all we need to do is make a couple of small changes. We're going to show the incorrect caption. We're still going to hide the submit button. We are going to show the next button that's only worth zero points. And we're still going to disable all of these items here. So I'm going to save this as an action. Click OK. Click Close. And what we can do now is select our submit button on success execute advanced action and of course choose our submit button and we should be good to go let's test this out let's preview html5 in browser so there we go let's get it wrong by not selecting the right number of answers submit incorrect only one or two accessories decreases the possibility of selling more items with every customer 
And then of course we're displayed the next uh, button. That's worth no points. Let's reset this and try again. So now I'll try it with more than three answers. In fact, submit excellent offer three or more accessories increases the possibility of selling more items with each customer. Click the next button to proceed. And of course, the next button that's displayed is the one that's worth 10 points. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.